With the magnetic connection demonstration, we show the direct connection between magnetic activity on the sun and its impact on technologies we use in our everyday lives like GPS and cell phones. Let's start by getting all the pieces ready. Each time you present this demonstration, you'll want to make sure all your compasses are pointing in the same direction, preferably north. If they're not, you can easily realign them by swiping the rod magnet over the surface. You'll also want to make sure that everything's been removed from the box and that all metal and magnets are at least a couple of feet away so they don't interfere with the compasses. This includes making sure that the table you're using doesn't have metal supports right under your demonstration. We've been observing the sun today, and I have a box with compasses on it. Well, what do compasses have to do with the sun? Well, let's start by thinking about where compasses point. Has anyone here ever used a compass before? Where do they point? North. Right. Here, take a look at these. Which way is north? Great. Uh, that works because the Earth has fairly regular magnetic field lines that run roughly north and south, uh, like in this picture. The compasses follow those magnetic field lines. Now, if we put a magnet in the middle of those compasses, what happens? Oh, the compasses are now following the north to south magnetic field lines around the magnet. You can follow the magnetic field lines using one of these compasses. Now, let me show you here. Okay, if we take this magnet out again, where will the compasses point? Right. All of the compasses point north again. This is what makes a compass so useful for navigation on Earth. Well, we saw that the Earth's magnetic field is fairly regular. Here, I have an illustration of the sun's magnetic field lines. Do you think you'd be able to navigate on the sun using a compass? No way. On a large scale, the sun has north-south magnetic field lines, but near the surface, the magnetic field lines are tangled and irregular. Sometimes, field lines will loop and pop through the surface of the sun. Let me show you. Uh, would you help me out? Put your arm out, good. You will be the surface of the sun. My arms represent a magnetic field line that gets twisted and, and loops through the surface. Now, has anyone seen sunspots in the telescopes today? Now, sunspots occur here, where the loop emerges. They're the footprints of the magnetic field lines on the visible surface of the sun. Now, these magnetic loops gather material from the sun's atmosphere, and it spirals around the loops. Now, sometimes the loops can reconnect like a short circuit. They can generate a sudden release of energy that violently blows apart from the atmosphere, away from the sun, and, and they eject it into space. We call that a solar storm. Now, a solar storm is an enormous cloud filled with positively and negatively charged particles. Now, these storms are not always pointed in the direction of the Earth, but sometimes they are. If it is, it takes two or three days after that explosion for the cloud to reach and wash over the Earth. Now, let's imagine that there is a solar storm coming toward the Earth. What's going to happen to the magnetic field? Let's watch. Compasses go crazy. Yeah. The particles in the solar storm shift the Earth's magnetic field around, and moving magnetic fields can generate electrical current. No, really. Uh, let me show you. Uh, this flashlight doesn't need batteries. It has a magnet in it. Uh, would you shake it like this for several seconds? The moving magnet in the flashlight generates an electric current. Look it turns the light on. So we just saw how moving magnets create electrical currents. Uh, this happens on a much larger scale on Earth, when a solar storm washes over the Earth and our magnetic field. It generates currents. These currents excite the atoms in our atmosphere and can create beautiful aurora, like in this picture. Has anyone ever seen the Northern Lights? Uh, but that's not all. 
Solar storms can affect our way of life, too. They can induce electrical currents at the Earth's surface. Now, these can overload the power grid and blow out transformers. Uh, this happened in Canada in 1989 and caused a widespread blackout. Fortunately, the power companies are developing new ways to help protect our electrical grids from massive blackouts. Uh, who has a cell phone? Has anyone here used a GPS device? Well, solar storms can impact orbiting satellites, causing things like long-distance cell phone service and GPS to be interrupted. Satellites can be protected by proper shielding, and given enough notice, they can be powered down temporarily to protect their electronics, but communications that depend on those satellites would be interrupted. NASA and other international space agencies are keeping a close eye on the sun, watching its every flicker. By better understanding how the sun and how it works, NASA hopes to provide earlier warnings to help protect our technologies from weather out in space.